For my first book, I was interviewing workers who were not working through platforms because they weren't really around yet. <laughs> That's how old I am. Um, and uh, the rise of platforms really happened during my research for that book. And so I knew for the second project that I wanted to um, focus more on platform workers. But the care platforms became an interest because I realized that women were not really a part of the initial conversation on um, women workers. And so I wanted to look around in the economy to say, where could I be sure to find women who were working um, in these uh, platform mediated environments? And care work was an obvious choice. I ended up um, accidentally <laughs> doing this because in my initial research, uh, I realized that algorithmic management was just not the empirical phenomenon that was happening on these platforms. Um, the platforms were not telling the care workers when to put the baby to bed or when to feed the baby because that would be ridiculous, of course, I think. Um, and so what I needed to do was to develop a different framework to understand what the platforms were doing beyond this initial um, conceptualization of direct management. I have been combining uh, in-depth interviews with uh, care workers across the United States um, with long-term sort of longitudinal analysis of the companies and also all of their sort of cultural products. So looking at the ways that their CEOs uh, speak in the news, looking at the different ways that they try to influence um, the news media with different statistics and things like that, um, and also the lawsuits that they're involved in. Um, and more recently, I've been combining the worker interviews with interviews with parents. So I'm able to get at both sides of the market. I have a, a funny story that I like to tell about fieldwork um, that uh, was based on a mistake that I made with my uh, research partner, Alexander Matisku, when we first started this research in 2017, 2016, 2017, which this, was that we thought that we could just show up to the places where um, nannies, in our case, we were interested in childcare workers, um, would hang out, right? So we went to playgrounds and parks um, in New York City, where we were based at the time, and we said, no problem, right? We're women, they're women, it's gonna be fine, they're sitting around with the kids, we'll talk about how cute the kids are, we'll recruit them that way, face to face. Um, and what we got was kicked out of a park. <laughs> um, not officially, but socially, right? Um, and we realized that thank, thank goodness there was one um, very kind nanny who took pity on us and kind of followed us out of the park and said, mm, let me let you into the secret, which is that this group of workers is so intensely surveilled, um, both offline and online, um, that they were extremely reticent to, to sign up for any kind of research study, which of course, after we learned this, was an incredibly obvious thing, that we should have thought of this um, going into it. But because of that, um, the online forums where, uh, in our case, nannies would come together to talk about, not platforms, but to talk about just issues in their field, right? How to take care of the kids, different activities to do, meeting up in a park later today, um, that those were safer spaces for them socially. Um, and so that was a space where we were able to start um, interacting with folks. And once we were able to be there, then we were able to be more trusted members of that community. Care work platforms, I think, were uniquely positioned to benefit, to profit um, from the COVID-19 crisis. Um, and whereas before, when I was studying them, they were relatively marginal players, um, you know, maybe at, at conferences like this one, um, maybe no one had ever heard of the, of the platforms that I was studying, um, but really, throughout the crisis, they rose to prominence and they became much more uh, sort of public actors in this ecosystem, in large part because of trends that were happening all along, right, towards marketization and privatization as well. I think the key differences is that there aren't any. <laughs> um, that uh, the way that care work has been regulated in the past has been through an explicit absence um, of regulation, especially when it comes to the worker side of things. Um, care workers, at least in the United States, domestic workers were explicitly and intentionally excluded from labor market protections um, because of gendered and racial reasons. Um, and 
even though in previous decades they've been subsequently included through subsequent legislation, um, de facto they're still excluded because a lot of the market is still informal. So in care work, I think the important thing to remember, and again, I'm only speaking from my case, which is in the United States, uh, the ways that workers find their work is extremely fragmented. Um, so platforms exist as one of many different sources of how these workers find their work. So interestingly, what I've found in the research is that um, these workers, immigrant workers, but also American-born workers as well, may not define themselves as platform workers because it's one of only one way that, of the 10 ways is that they find their clients. Um, uh, Francisca Baum's work actually also just talked about this downstairs. Um, and so one of the ways that we have had to adapt in our research is adapting the actual language that we use to talk about what we are interested in. Um, and so what we have started talking about with workers is when we shifted from, are you a platform worker? Do you work through platforms? To instead asking, how do you find your jobs, right? Through the internet. Okay, where on the internet, right? Facebook, care.com, right? All these different things. So by adapting to the ways that workers themselves understand this ecosystem, we were able to understand better um, their participation in it. First, I need to turn the thing that I've been working on for the past five years into a book. <laughs> that is the thing that I'm working on right now. Um, and what I'm really curious about right now is, especially given the really um, wonderful uh, flourishing of research on care platforms that I've seen over the past few years, um, it's a small but very mighty group of, of researchers, I'm really interested now in taking a few big steps backwards in history and to say, how can we make sense of the current situation of care platforms and of women working through platforms in general by putting them into a different historical context? Um, and so I'm gonna be talking about that in my talk tomorrow.